Hi, I'm Dane Lloyd. You're a member of Parliament here in Sturgeon River Parkland, and I'm joined by uh, President Kerry Margetts of the Northwest Redwater Partnership. And we're here at the uh, the refinery here, the brand new refinery. And I'm very pleased to be joined by you. And uh, let's talk about some of the great stories that are happening here. Yeah, we employ about 313 people, employees, and there's about another 300 contractors. So on a given day, around 600 people come to work every day. Um, and a little fewer numbers, of course, with the COVID situation. So we have some people clearly working from home, but uh, great, great group of contractors and employees that help us every day running this place uh, safely. You know, the other aspect we wanted to talk about here is is how great of a story this is, not only for uh, Sturgeon County and the greater Edmonton area, but a great story for Alberta and a great story for Canada, because this refinery is now processing Alberta's low value uh, bitumen products and it's turning it into high value diesel products. Could you describe to us how the refinery is doing that and, and what value this is creating for Alberta and for Canada? Yeah. So, you know, there's really two basic principles that the visionaries put together for this uh, project. First one was certainly around processing our bitumen here at home in, in Canada, in Alberta, as opposed to sending all our oil down to the States and offshore. So uh, that was the first principle, and that's what we're doing now, is uh, the plant's designed to process about 79,000, 80,000 barrels a day of uh, diluted bitumen. and. Um, the other component, of course, is, is having a, a, a low carbon intensity green type product at the end of the day. And, and one of the key components of this plant, which is unique, is a gas fire, which we're able to capture uh, CO2 and sequester it. Well, that's a great segue into the next area that I wanted to talk about. And uh, for those of you that are listening, you know, you know, when I've been talking in the House of Commons, I've always been championing our carbon capture and utilization uh, technology. And I have to say, our riding here in Sturgeon River Parkland is ground zero for innovation in carbon capture uh, technology. Uh, this refinery, along with the nutrient fertilizer plant just next door, captures pure streams of carbon dioxide and pumps it into the Alberta carbon trunk line, which is a pipeline that uh, takes this high pressured CO2 down to uh, the Red Deer area and it goes into uh, old oil wells where they weren't able to get uh, any more oil out of it through the traditional conventional methods. But with this uh, pure CO2 product that's being produced here at this refinery, they're able to sequester the CO2 uh, deep underground and actually get more oil products out of the ground. And so I'm very hopeful that uh, this isn't going to be the last uh, carbon capture project in this country. This is one of the first projects in this country. And, and I know that there's going to be so many people following your example uh, so that we can have this low carbon energy efficient future. Carrie, thank you so much for uh, the opportunity to talk with you today. And uh, we're going to continue on with our tour of the refinery. Thank you. Joined by Vanessa Goodman, Chief of External Relations here at the Northwest Redwater Partnership here in Sturgeon County, Alberta. But, uh, I think a lot of people in our riding and across Alberta want to know, uh, you know, how is this going to impact them? And so what sort of community involvement is uh, the Northwest Redwater Partnership doing in our communities? Yeah, one of our big goals is to make sure that we are the kind of neighbor that everyone wants to live beside. And living beside or having an industrial facility in your neighborhood uh, definitely has, it, it makes the community a little bit different. And so what we want to do is make sure that that community involvement and our presence in the community is as positive as possible. So we maintain as great a relationship as what we can with our local residents around here. The municipalities, uh, Gibbons and Redwater, of course, are our closest. But then, you know, there's communities all over Sturgeon County that, that we make sure that we're involved in. The other thing is, is like, you know, a lot of people want to know, like, where are the goods? Like, how is this going to impact uh, our community in terms of uh, tax revenue? And so what's the impact of uh, this refinery in terms of uh, being a tax paying uh, resource for Sturgeon County and for the communities around here? Yeah, so taxes and spending are two of the big things that we do in which we can actually infuse money within into the community for just operating the facility. So the tax revenue to, to Sturgeon County is between 20 and 30 million every year when we're an operating facility. And the other thing is uh, the local spend. So during construction, within the 100 kilometer radius, 
and that's not very far. You can think of all the small towns within that 100 kilometer radius of the refinery. We spent over $4.4 billion during the construction, during the phase one uh, construction. Now, long term, that's going to be uh, different, of course, that you have that one time big infus infusion of money during construction. But long term operations, it'll be about $150 million every year on goods and services that we spend just to become an operating facility. Not only is this refinery providing 600 really well paying jobs for our region, it's uh, value adding our Alberta bitumen and turning it into high value diesel products, but also they are committing and they're spending $150 million a year that goes towards our local small and medium sized enterprises to provide supplies and services uh, to this refinery. And it's also gonna be providing between 20 to $30 million annually for our local communities. So that means, uh, you know, fixing roads, wastewater, all sorts of things that uh, we know that we need in our communities, especially during these tough economic times. So Vanessa, I just want to thank you so much for, for uh, being with us today and uh, giving us a tour of this wonderful refinery and, and telling us all the wonderful things that, uh, that we're doing, that you're doing in our community. Absolutely, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much.